why people quit is uh, emotional and mental strain. A lot of overthinking uh, that goes into ministry. A lot of thinking. A lot of pondering. What ifs? What if, you know? Uh, we can be people pleasers, but there's a lot of times where the devil will come and try to bring that type of mindset, like, "Oh, I think you should do this because you know people will like you, you know, better." Or don't say this, but we have to rely on the word of God. We have to stay on God's word, and we have to live on um, a, a righteous living and do exactly what God called us to do, and do it the right way. Um, another another thing is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is, is very very true and it's real um the bible says in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 through 6 it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So we have to remember that spiritual warfare is real, but you can't fight it. You can't fight spiritual warfare on your own mind. You have to fight using the word of God. And so um, I'm sure you can even say from your experience, um, you know, when it comes to ministry, the warfare that we have to deal with, oh, yeah. um, especially, uh, you know, the, the warfare that we, we had to endure when putting on the conference, you know, uh, there was right. things that we, we faced, things that we've been through. They were just like, oh, my goodness, like, how is this possible? Um, there's people, you know, that do big events monthly or biweekly. I'm like, my goodness, like the things that they have to go through uh, just to fulfill that. Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And so we have to remember that spiritual warfare is real. But we have to remember that during the time that we're going through spiritual warfare, that we have to surround ourselves with other believers. Uh, you know, there's going to be times the devil attacks us and, you know, uses lies against us, but we have to stay grounded in the word. And we have to surround ourselves with, with brothers and sisters in Christ that will uplift us. Um, you know, another one is burnout. Burn off in self care. A lot of times people get burnt out because they're doing it on their own strength. Uh, God never called you to do it on your own strength, but a lot of times people forget that you know the devil he he wants to attack. We, we forget that the devil he's he's after us. We we got to focus on the Lord, and whenever the devil does attack us, we have to remember that we're doing it with trusting Him, knowing that. We're, we're not in this on our own, or we're not doing this on, on our own strength. You see, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ministry was never intended for you to do it by yourself. God has called you to, to trust in Him. And so, you see, one of the primary reasons why pastors quit is because of burnout. The, it's caused by excessive workload and stress. And ministry involves numerous responsibilities, including preaching, counseling, administra uh, administration, and community engagement. The, the demanding nature of these tasks can lead to physical, emotional, and spiritual exhaustion. You know, pastors, they often, they face unrealistic expectations because people, they, they have this mindset that the pastor has to do everything. They have this mindset that, uh, the pastor has to be there for their every need. You know, that's why some pastors put leaders in position is because they can't do everything. And so sometimes pastors, they, they feel like uh, they, they can do it all and they don't ask for help. Therefore, they end up either falling short or they end up being burnt out. And so we have to make sure that we're not doing this on our own get around people that would back you up get around people that would help you get around people that will uh continue to to help you as well there's times where i feel overloaded with the ministry my wife can tell you uh, she's not in the picture at the moment but uh she'll find, there you go there you go there's times where uh i'm overloaded with ministry there's times where 
Um, I just feel like, oh my goodness, like this is too much. I can't do this. Thank God for my golly wife. Uh, she encourages me. And there's times where, where she'll ask me and uh, you guys can't see, but my son, Jeremiah, he's behind the camera right now. And he actually helps uh, set up in the, uh, man, that looks great. Give a shout out to Jeremiah in the comment right now. Yeah, he just fixed us and refocused us and made us look extra nice. So thanks, Jeremiah. You're awesome. And so um, there'll be times where um, we feel uh, just burnt or I feel burnt out or I feel like, oh, my goodness, like the, the load is, is just uh, crazy. And my wife would sometimes come in and say, what can I do to, that, that would help you? What, what can I do um, that would take the load off of you? Uh, and there was some, you know. Uh, some things that we were talking about at, at lunch earlier today. Uh, we had, we had a, you know, the lunch date earlier and uh, everybody shouting out Jeremiah. Uh, so we had, we had a lunch date earlier and, we, you know, oftentimes whenever we go on, on our, on our dates, we ask questions. We say, okay, well, how's life? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what, what, what are we doing that can improve ministry, improve our marriage? And, uh, you know, a lot of times, and we'll get into that, uh, in just a moment about the marriage part of, of ministry. Uh, but the big part of it is not having help. And so uh, on our lunch, on our lunch day, we're talking about, okay, this is what we got to do communication. There'll be times where um, I'm, I'm doing ministry and I'm just so focused that I forget about my wife's opinion. And uh, there's times where I'm just like, Oh, I'm on the go. I got to do this. I got to do that. And uh, I'll like share it with my wife. And I'll share with her that, um, you know, hey, um, I'm going to go preaching and um, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. And then she'll tell me, OK, pray about it. And so I'm like, all right, cool. Um, I'm going to pray about it. And then I'll, you know, I'll pray about it and then I'll, I'll get extra excited and then I'm, I'll run with it. And and I'll be like, all right, cool. I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this. And then buy my flight ticket. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to preach. And then my wife's like, Hey, uh, like, so you're, you're going out there. Like we really didn't really talk about it like that. Like it was almost like, uh, like, Hey, I think I'm going to do this. And then, uh, you ran with it. And so, uh, these are minor fixes that we do. We talk about, and then we say, okay, let's fix it. And, uh, if we're not careful, we could be easily burnt out. And so one thing I, I love about my wife is that, uh, she loves to, you know, write everything out. She loves to talk about everything. It's okay. Let's pray about this first. Let's write it down. Let's inquire of the Lord. And then we'll run with it if he says, yeah. And so I love the fact that, uh, we have that, that type of help, that communication, that relationship is because if we don't have that, then it's easy to get burnt out and uh, we're a team. So we got, we got to make sure that we do this thing together. And, uh, most importantly, if you want to, if you want to not experience burnout, it's very important that you take some time off. Let's don't get religious on me. So oh, what you got to take some time off. It's very crucial that you take time off. It's very important that you rest. Rest is very important because look, ministry, look, you're, you're going to do ministry until, you know, the Lord calls you home. Right. And so, um, and so with that being said is you have to take care of your temple. Not just resting, but also the way that you eat. And so one thing, even with me, is uh, thank God for mentors and people that really care for you because they'll tell you the truth, even when you don't want to, you know, want to hear it. And so uh, keeping your temple clean, the way you're eating, the exercising, making sure you're resting. And because you don't want to get burnt out if you, you're, you're going to do ministry for a while until the Lord calls you home. So if, if you're constantly doing things on a rapid speed it's not going to last. If, if you're constantly doing things uh, and trying to get it done, trying to get it done, no brainstorming, no resting, you're not going to succeed. You're going to crumble and then you're going to want to walk away because that's how some people end up, you know, just throwing the towel. So make sure you take time off. Make sure your resting is very important. Go on vacations, spend quality time with your family. It's very needed. And always, always incorporate, like if you're married, incorporate your wife incorporate your children you never know the the brilliant ideas there's times where i ask i ask my kids jeremiah and justin and uh, i'll say hey what are some ideas that we could do and it'll just blow you away the ideas that they have like 
wow, you know what? I, I didn't think of that. You know, I didn't think that would that would help. I, I didn't think that you know that would work. And uh, just their ideas, then they're the next generation, and so you know, they'll definitely uh, bring some good to the table. And so another one is financial pressure. That's a big one. That's that's one of the biggest <laughs> ones. <laughs> that's one of the biggest ones that um, a lot of pastors end up throwing in the towel is because financial burden. Constantly putting out, constantly traveling, constantly, oh, I got to pay for this. How many, how many, <laughs> my wife will expose me in a moment. That's why I love her. Um, how many times do, do I uh, put us in situations where maybe it can wait, but I'm just like, no, I need this. Yeah, I need new lights or I need a new camera lens or a new camera for the production. Like there's always something, yeah, always, always something. something. But I mean, mostly it's, you uh you have a love for people so you're just like as soon as it's a need it's like oh we want you out here brother you're like okay buy the flight ticket i'm like bro you didn't <laughs> you gotta like hold out like see if they can help a little bit but you're just like no i gotta go out there i gotta i have to you know it's a need so it's mostly that like you'll do like buy the hotel ticket uh i mean the hotel or the the flight ticket whatever it is you'll put you know, you because you care so much for people, and um, so you, you really ask for help, and yeah, it's just it's not easy when money's not coming in like that for us, because God said full time ministry for you, so um, your income it doesn't it's like up and down, so it's not consistent, so sometimes it's a risk, but God always comes through. Yeah. Always, but I could see why it would be like, um, well, people would give up because it's not, it's not easy. It's scary, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, it def definitely is scary, um, you know, and that's why people walk away from ministry and we're like, you know, especially full time because full time God is calling you full time. You know, it's like no nine to five. He wants you to stay in preparation. He wants you to study. He wants you to uh, prepare those messages and. Yeah. really give it your all because yeah. you know for much is given much is required so a lot of times even for, from my experience when, whenever i did have one of those full-time jobs and ministry mm -hmm. um there'll be times where it'll it won't be a balance it's for a moment it'll be a balance but then it's either my job takes a toll on me and then i'm like oh not today i'll get on tomorrow because i need to rest yeah. And then I missed an opportunity, and then by the time we know it, a week went by. Uh, one of the big ones <laughs> is uh, when we were talking was, uh, I know it has nothing to do with the financial part, but, um, you know, God called me to, you know, get online and minister. And um, it's never about, like, the money part. It's just being obedient. And so having that balance is either you're in it for God or you're not. And so sometimes... Uh, pastors, they, they, you know, they don't like the full-time ministry part is because God tells them to leave their, their regular job, their nine to five, just to, you know, be in full-time ministry. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes that causes you to spend more time with people. Yeah. Um, I'm always on the phone. Like uh, there was, there was a moment where it was almost like I'll be on the live. And what would happen right after? That was my phone. Or text. Somebody will call or text, and I'm on the phone with them for like another two hours, mm -hmm. praying and prophesying, and uh, you know, just constant. And I'm like, oh my goodness, imagine if I was at my job, yeah. like, I'd probably get fired. And so uh, it's it's that balance. But and then in some cases, you know, sometimes God does call somebody full time ministry, but He does have them in a season where they're working a job yet doing ministry just for a season, mm -hmm. and then they have that balance. But then there's times where God's like, nope, I need your full attention. Yeah. And so we're just like, uh, all right, God, like, uh, how, how's this going to pay the bills? Or how's this, you know, how's this going to, how's this beneficial for us? Yeah. Uh, but we have to remember that it's all about souls. And at the end of the day, and God is obedient. our provider. And being obedient, yeah. yeah. That's important. Um, it's easier, actually, to get a nine to five. I learned that. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes... <laughs> Ministers could make it look like glamorized and like 
they have like the perfect aesthetic, like the coffee, they take the pictures, they have the family, and just like they have the nice house and cars and um, you can get caught up thinking, oh, well, if I do this, God's going to take care of me like that. Sometimes you're not going to have that, the luxury of like just, you know, having money here and there, books selling or whatever. Sometimes you just got to faith in, and that's what we have to do. We have to walk by faith. So right now, I believe God is allowing us to go through this to to live out faith, like, because that's what he wants, um, the just to live by faith. So it's it's not easy like i always say like you know what maybe we should just get regular jobs yeah. and you know and but um at the end of the day i feel so convicted every time i think about that every time i think about you getting another job um i remember uh one time i was like okay well if you get another job we could just pay rent and everything would be <laughs> great and the lord showed me um i'm not sure if the baby's name was ishmael with uh when sarah told the uh the maid or handmaid to uh get she said um you know just go sleep with her and have a baby because I can't have a baby um I'm too old and then so when I was thinking about getting him getting another job and it was just answer all of our prayers or you know whatever bills we had the Lord said uh he showed he showed me that story like yeah you you can get another job but it's not gonna be what I want mm. you know so just like, even though God took care of that baby when it came and it worked out, it's still, he still had a promise for Sarah to have a baby. So it's just like, we have to stay on that path and like, not try to have like an A and B or like, a, what do you call it? Like a, a, like a second resort. Or... Yeah. Or I, I can't think of it right now, but like a, yeah, you know what I mean? Like another option. Another alternative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because th- th- we want to sometimes. It's easier that way. And I'm like, you know, God, uh, I mean, why not? Like, we don't have to worry about people sewing or anything like that. It's just, yeah, plan B. Thank you. Plan um, B, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why well, can't I think of that? But yeah. Um, um, yeah. So it's just, it's easier to have another job. But we have to live by faith. Yeah. yeah. So and you know how are we going to be ministers and we truly don't have faith and it's not tested so um if you're just ministering and people are like oh well you know how do you know how you know well i've been through it and god seen me through it so we live by our testimony yeah absolutely and uh that's that's one of the big things and um you know i always tell people and i'm sure you guys you guys have heard of the same um I'm always constantly telling people like whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, it's not just God punishing you and saying, Oh, I'm getting, you know, put you through this so that way you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. It's for the next person. Yeah. Like my wife was saying, like, how can we have a testimony? How can we share with others? Like, Hey, we're in this. God's our source. Like God's our provider. And, uh, we don't know how, how he does it. Sometimes we don't know how it works out, but God does it. Time. every time like uh every, but you know. every every month i'm crying <laughs> like he didn't do it before um, yeah like okay god you got us mm-hmm. you, you said full-time ministry you said you'll take care of us um i i see myself like the israelites when they were complaining um and they're just like you know god was bringing a fresh manna and water and coming from heaven and all these things but they were just like, why would you bring us out here to die? They were just complaining. And mm-hmm. then I, I find myself doing that. Like, okay, I'm complaining, <laughs> you know? And But it's just like he provides every day. And he said, don't worry about tomorrow. But Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, going back to that, it's, mm-hmm. that's why a lot of pastors end up leaving ministry. Yeah, because they don't see their life. They don't like, see it. They see it on so other people's on social media, and that's a that it's crazy that that's so big in um in our culture now. Like mm-hmm. the generation we're in now is it's all about social media. Uh, it's so deceiving. Yeah. Like um, we won't say who, but uh, those really well-known pastors that mm-hmm. that that you know we we were under for a while till God transitioned us, and once we left all that. Um, my wife would always feel, feel something like there's always there, there's something that just doesn't oh, seem like yeah. mm-hmm. you know and oh um, my gosh yeah their social media was like 
oh my goodness, like picture perfect, picture perfect, the Dang. perfect angles. And one Down thing, week. one thing is annoying to me. I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. <laughs> one thing that's just annoying to me is the the fake laugh pictures. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like they're walking, right? Like, they're, they're, like, <laughs> like somebody punched them in the stomach, and they're just walking. And- <laughs> Like just something is so funny. It's like right. oh, it's not funny, but right. No, yeah, they were pretty much well known, rich, and we're not gossiping. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just testimony of, of what we've been yeah. through as well. So it's just like what if you from. could see people on Instagram in their life, and you're just like, man, how come my life is not like that? But God showed me in a dream that this lady was struggling with something, and then the next day, um, they came out that they were going to get a divorce. Yeah. And yeah, and that's it like it's a divorce all, all the happiness and things like that on instagram was just a lie pretty much yeah and so it's like we could get caught up looking at people's lives and thinking like comparing and like why are why am i not living like that yet mm-hmm. you know it it's hard not to compare but yeah yeah that's a big one it's like uh People want to, it's like people look up to other celebrities and like people that are, you know, well known or look like they got it all together on social media because pictures, they make it look perfect. Mm-hmm. And so um, you just never know what they're going through. And that's why with us, we try to be uh, very transparent. Uh, like, you know, it's, you can see a picture and I'm like, man, they got it all together, but it's not always the case. And so, uh, that's why we're even sharing like right now, like, you know, there's there's people in ministry that are struggling. There's people in ministry that are walking away. And, and I don't know if I give the statistics to that, but the statistic was more than 1,700 pastors and ministers live, leaving ministry every month. Mm. That's big. Every month, 1,700. That's crazy. That's insane. Not only the church, not only including the churches that are closing down. Mm-hmm. It's 7,000 churches closing every month. That's crazy. That you just you ne- never know. That's why you know people quit is because of the burnout and financial pressure. Not only that, but the loneliness and isolation that comes with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Like, that's a really big one. <laughs> loneliness and isolation. Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't be so caught up on the oohs and the wow. Like, oh, man, like. Their production is great, and oh my goodness, like their family is perfect. You just never know what they're going through. Yeah. And so this is an encouragement too, like you know, everybody should have a pastor. You know, everybody is um if you have a pastor, encourage them because you never know what they face, you never know what they what they deal with. Um, my wife knows me very well, and I'm I'm always open to her, like, hey, I'm I'm dealing with this. We need to pray. Yeah. And uh, I thank God for, for our team as well because, uh, man, they're on it, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. there'll be times where I'm like, hey, I'm dealing with heavy anxiety right now or I'm dealing with discouragement. And there they are right away praying. praying yeah. There they are encouraging. Uh, and they'll, they'll send me scriptures and, hey, we're praying for you. And they'll literally pray for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just shout out to our team for uh, always always supporting and, and just being a blessing mm-hmm. to us. Is you need that. You can't do it on your own. Like, yeah, you might have your your husband or wife, and that's great, but it's always good to have um, other people that are on the outside that are believers that can back you up and pray too. Because let's be real. Like, there's times where you're going through things where I may not understand, uh, but I'll pray. You know, I'll pray and we'll have a deliverance session if we need to, or I'll pray, but... um, there's there's times where you're gonna need someone to pour into you, and as I mentioned, like if you're in any type of ministry, make sure that um, now when I say take some time off, I'm not saying hey take a whole month off and just forget about the ministry. The ministry is your baby. Ministry, you you got to make sure that you're you're pouring into them, that you're making sure that you're filling them with, with the word of God. But make sure that you're having that that mm-hmm. self care too. Uh, with the, my wife and I were just talking about, um, I found I found a new hobby, <laughs> and uh, I mean, not that you don't like it, but I, I'm finding that I'm balance. Than you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's not the discussion, <laughs> but uh, so I found out that I, I have a new hobby. I guess they call it a hobby, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. 
uh, so my new hobby and my favorite thing to do right now is bowling. Now, let's just be real. I used to suck. And, um, my, you know, my wife still beats me, but I joined the league and everything. I'm like, oh, I'm legit about the shoes and the bowling ball. And I go every Thursday and, uh, I even get like two free games like during the week. And so, um, that's my self care. Yeah. Like that's my unwinding. I'm like, you know, there's people, they do golfing. There's people, they, I don't know, go out and drink some tea for, go uh, to the spa go or, or um, uh, Robert said, really? Bowling? Yes. Yeah, bro, bowling. I love bowling. It, it's just, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and so uh, that's how I have my self-care. I'm like, I feel like, you know, and I was going to give it up. My wife and I were like, hey, you know, I, I think you need to focus a little more on ministry and not do bowling. And I was like, I promise I'll have a balance. You know, I, I just feel like that's me. You know, I just feel like that's where I, ca I can unwind. I feel like uh, there's no stress. There's no... Obviously, there's competition because you're playing against other people, but it's not like it takes your mind off. Things. It takes your mind off things, yeah. Like, uh, like when I was, you know, I know it doesn't look like it now, but when I was younger and much thinner, I used to love to work out. I used to love to run. I used to run to clear my mind, and I would run for like two hours. Mm -hmm. Now I have, you know, I can't, I can't run like that. I'll do some speed walking, but my thing right now is bowling. And so, uh, find something that. You can, you can, uh, you know, have self care, you know, find some something that an outlet, yeah, an outlet where you can feel like, okay, I can unwind, you know, I, I can, I can be myself, I can, uh, there's no stress, there's, there's no weight, it's, it's just me time, and uh, go home, you feel refreshed. There's times where, um, like this past Thursday, um, had a really good bowling tournament, we lost, obviously, um, but uh, it was a really good tournament. Came home and I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to do some more ministry. I'm excited. I'm. I feel like this weight was off of me. Let me pour into some people. We had a, a wonderful time on Instagram. Um, yeah. Healing took place. Uh, somebody's toe got healed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the bruises and everything went. Uh, somebody's eyes were healed. Like we, we had an amazing time in the Lord. And so, uh, a lot of times, pastors they they call it sabbaticals. They go on a sabbatical and they 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 you know. They're, the wife and the husband, they go out, they no phone, no social media, no preaching, just relaxing, mm -hmm. you know, just enjoying each other. And uh, they come back so refreshed. And it seems like when they preach the word, it's like, oh, my goodness, they came with some dunamis power, you know, that, that Holy Ghost power. And so it's very much needed. And so uh, I highly encourage you, you know, to find that rest time. Yeah. And uh, I know there, there were some things that you wanted to share um, that you had on your notes, too. Now I'm in ministry. Um, it might not be like um, all live or on the in front of the camera, but we have a, a we have a um, what do you call it? A, a connect group now, a Bible study at our home. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, the day before um we had the <clears throat> the night before we uh did our first one um i i had the like really bad anxiety attack i was crying and i was just feeling like i'm not good enough i don't um i usually isolate myself i'm quiet um i like to hide um i don't and i know somebody said about like not fitting in ruben and that, that's exactly how i felt yeah. like I feel like I'm, you know, sometimes not cool enough. And um, it's times where God tells me to get on live with my husband or uh, just things like that. And it, it that takes a toll on me. And it, but I realized that doing it and pleasing the Lord, um, it just brings me so much joy. Like I was crying, just like, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if people are going to like me. And then, um, then this after it happened and we had a wonderful time, it was so fun. Just, it was just so much fun. Um, people already felt like life changing and it felt mm -hmm. like they can come to us and talk to us. And um, it just, I just felt so much joy after. So I, I know that serving the Lord and, you know, his joy is my, it gives me strength, you know, and it says that in his word. And, um, but it's times where the devil attacks and like, you're not good enough. So you're not, they're not going to like you, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, I dealt with things like, 
I wasn't the smartest in school. I, I couldn't speak that well. Um, there's just certain things that I will always constantly go through my mind. And it just made me want to just say, okay, well, I'm just good at hiding. I can support my husband from the background. But like this moving to Texas, it's like God is like, nope, I'm pushing you. I'm doing yeah. it. <laughs> Um, I'm in ministry now. I'm doing ministry with kids, and it's just it's it feels so good and rewarding, honestly. But I it, I do get the thoughts of not be, feeling good enough, and it reminds me of this one pastor uh, a couple years ago. Um, he had a big church in California, and uh, again, you would think that he's do, doing so well, and um, he just looked it looked like the perfect life, and. He ended up committing suicide. Mm-hmm. And um, so after that day, I was just like, you know, it, once I do get out of my fear, um, I do want to make sure I help ministers, like, just be there for them. Because I just wouldn't, I, would, I know that feeling of feeling like suicidal, hating yourself and not feeling good enough, not fitting in. So um, I just want to be able to help in that case. Like, it, it just, it sucks to feel that way, you know. But, you know, ministry could take a toll on you where you're comparing yourself and you feel like you can't fit in. Um, people stop because of that. Yeah. I like yeah. this this comment here. It says, when you feel you can't do it, God shines even brighter through you. Yeah. That's so true. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, so true. And, and our weakness, you know, he gets the glory out of it. So, you know, it's just, it's more opportunity for him to shine and, and get the glory. So, yeah, I agree. But yeah, that that was one of the topics of why, like, sometimes I feel like I don't want to do ministry. Um, like, you know, once a week we do our connect group mm-hmm. and it's times where I'm just like, I don't know if they like me and they don't like my cooking, but they're always like, oh, we loved your cooking. We like, like, you know, they just, they have so much fun with us. They don't want to leave. So yeah, um, it's just, it's just a lie from the enemy. And, um, you know, that that's going to come. But we have to, like, combat that with, with God's word. You know, yeah. what does God say says about us and stuff? And, and it's like, it's about being obedient. And I noticed that being obedient makes me more happy. Because mm-hmm. um, when I was hiding, I was just, like, depressed, sad. But once I'm out and doing ministry and serving, and I just feel so much joy and strength. So, um yeah, just don't give up. It's not going to be easy. The devil wants you to give up. He doesn't want you to help nobody. Um, but it's so rewarding. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of the the best things about uh, seeing what God does through that is, you know, we have this mindset like, I'm not qualified, or yeah. uh, why would people want to listen to me? And then... Um, or, you know, you think about like the financial aspect of like, oh, you know, we don't have all this money and we can't mm-hmm. do this much or our house isn't that decorated, you know. Oh, or, yeah. um, so it's like all these these thoughts. And then but once it, it's almost like our mindset changes because once we see how blessed they are and then they come to like, man, like we really needed this today. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Holy Spirit just comes upon them or they get a word and they're like, wow, like I made it, you know, and Mm -hmm. uh, that word was just for me or the preaching was just for me or I needed this fellowship. Yeah. It it really changes our mind. Like, like, wow, like all these things we we deal with in our mind or uh, we overthink about certain things. And it was like, all of it's worth it because they were blessed by it. Oh, yeah. I feel so full. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Because like, I'll be worried about if like we don't have like we have a nice apartment but we it's not fully furnished um you know we moved to a different states so we, we're starting all over uh we might not have like certain like financially we're you know it's it's been a struggle but god provides every time like we're able to buy food for them and just provide a comfort in a home for them and that's what we do that's you know and God shows up. So yeah. that's all that matters. We that's just... all that matters. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Uh, like you mentioned, like, we'll be like, all right, God, uh, we don't know how we're going to do this. And we'll have just the right amount of money for it. Um, and, like, I know uh, lately we've been talking about, like, the testimonies and about, like, 
just God taking pleasure in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, how we're, you know, we're, we're talking about how uh, our house isn't fully furnished or fully uh, decorated yet, but we're like, all right, we're still going to do it. You know, yeah. go, we're still going to, we're still going to uh, have this Bible study, this connect group mm -hmm. and uh, things that only me and me and my wife will talk about like, Oh, you know, we really want to get this for the house and uh, it, it'll go good with it. And we'll be like, all right, maybe later. And then God will put on somebody else's heart and be like, Hey, God told me to give this to you. Yeah. It's like, wait, what? You know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. God knows every, every need. And it's just crazy how he does that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah he's our provider so. absolutely was a uh, uh, there anything else in there that that you wanted uh to share oh just um another one was you know coming with the right mindset when when doing ministry um don't come in thinking oh i'm gonna blow up like these social media <laughs> pastors and um, right rich and famous and you know if you that if that's your mindset just don't do it yeah because you're not gonna get nowhere with that like um i mean you might but um it won't last it's just, yeah it's just a temporary feeling and um i think you just do it for the love of, of god like because you love god and you want to be obedient don't do it because you want to look be popular and look mm -hmm. cool and like you know, show off to your old friends, like, look at me now, I'm, you know, I'm big shot, like, I don't know, just have the right mindset, like, don't do it just because of, like, popularity. Yeah. You know? And, you know, usually, uh, whenever we do have that mindset, that just lets you know that you're already in the wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have to remember that we're doing this for, for the Lord to bring him glory. And uh, it, it's all about souls. You know, it's all about not what we can gain or, you know, because yeah. it's so easy to be sidetracked. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, it's so easy to be like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this so I can gain this. But it's like, yeah. I remember, I remember one time uh, it was a very strong, uh, very big season of, of our life. And um, it just seemed like God was really teaching us faith. And I remember being so discouraged in, in the room and, I remember sitting on the couch and I was just crying. I'm like, man, God, I said, uh, how do you want us to do this? Like, yeah. I was like, how do you want me to provide for my family? I was like, we rarely have money. We rarely have food in our fridge, you know, at, at the time. And uh, I'm like, man, this is so hard. And I was just sitting there and the Holy Spirit would always prompt you to pray. The Holy Spirit would always you know, give you a word of encouragement or just slap you and be like, hey, get out of it. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, get out of that mindset. And I remember just, just sitting there and I'm like, all right. And I remember you came in the room and I remember you said that God gave you a word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember you said, uh, God was, God had said, even if I don't give you anything else, will you still do it? Oh yeah. I had a dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because even if, even if I don't, bless you anymore after that will you still do it yeah and it was almost like a heart check you know mm -hmm. like oh my goodness like because you know when you're in ministry and doing it for so long it's so easy to to get sidetracked to like oh, okay i got a check from this or mm -hmm. uh or you know i got a blessing from this but when you really stay focused on god it, it, that's all that matters yeah it's all that matters it's all that matters yeah and so uh it's just you know, we have to make sure that we don't have that mindset of what can I get from this? Yeah. What, what can I, what can I gain? Cause you'll you be disappointed every time. You'll be disappointed. Yeah. Because uh, first of all, God won't let you get there. Mm -hmm. And then you'll always be discouraged because it doesn't go your way. Cause you're, ex you're, uh, ex you're expecting such a great level of something mm -hmm. to happen like overnight and you'll be discouraged because it'll, it'll never you'll never get there mm -hmm. uh you know i heard a pastor say once he said only what you do for god will last yeah and it's so true when you have the right intention and the right heart to do something that's only pleasing to god it'll last yeah and that's all that matters mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and so uh 
Yeah, and so with that being said, uh, if you have you know a pastor, maybe your your minister, and uh, first of all, I just want to say this: if you're a pastor, and um, or if you have a pastor, I should say, I want to encourage you to uh, encourage them, love on them, you know, show them grace. Mm-hmm. They go through a lot. Yeah, they go through a lot. They may not open up and tell you. But they go through so much. I mean, as we read the statistics um, earlier, for those of you who, who didn't hear it, it was more than 1,700 pastors. They leave the ministry every month. Like, that's huge. You know, don't don't be the next person that causes – don't don't be the next person to, you know, to be the one that caused your pastor to, to close down the church. Because you know you're you're being stubborn, or uh, you know you want you want them to yourself. Like it, they have so much on their plate. Encourage them, love on them, bless them. You know, um, I guarantee you, if you was to ask them, hey, what is it that I can do that will take a burden off of you? How much relief they'll they'll feel. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's big. Yeah, even if. They say, oh, nothing is, I'm good. They, just knowing that somebody cares, that that helps, you know. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I like the comment says, pastors are people too. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, ab- mm-hmm. as, absolutely. Yes, because it's not easy. Yeah. Honestly, um, for, for people who actually have churches, to open their church every Sunday um, and then... Sometimes they do Bible study or midweek season. I mean, mm-hmm. church or whatever. I, I, man. And then they have to talk to so many people all the time. Right. Exactly. That. So with that being said, I, I want to open this up. And unless you want to share something, something else. Um. No. Those are the points that I, you know, that I feel people would give up. It's just they're not getting the results they want or mm-hmm. they think they should have. And, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it just shows your love for God. Are you going to keep doing this regardless of money comes, if popularity comes? If you love God, it, it shouldn't matter. Right. Um, you know, we uh, we come from California, and when we were out there, my husband was booked a lot. Oh, yeah. In California, maybe almost every weekend. And now that we moved to Austin, it's like it kind of, it you know, it went down a little bit, but mm-hmm. now we have a small group every week and, you know, we're pouring into them and having a relationship with them. So, it, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter um, if we could have stayed out there for California and just been booked financially. We were doing good, um, but it's just we got to do what God wants. And for yeah. the, we doing it because we love him and not because of what it looks like, you know. So you just check your heart, make sure that you're in it for the right reasons and that you're definitely um, make sure you're developing a relationship with the Lord, because if you're not, then you're just doing it for, you know, just it's just going to be in vain. And he he gives you strength when you develop and you seek him, um, you, you, that relationship that develops. And um, yeah, if you're constantly if you don't have a relationship with him, it's just. It, I don't know. It's just you won't have the strength to do this. And yeah. It just so it that's what's important. It's just your relationship with the Lord and just pleasing the Father, just like Jesus did. Like He asked God, like Lord, if it's Your will, please pass this cup. Like mm-hmm. I don't want this. And He said, Never left. Your will be done. You know. So it's the same with us. Um, we definitely what we would have loved to probably stay in California and. He, you know, it was just easier for us. The food was better. Sorry. I was just going to say that. <laughs> and the food was great. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. But <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> it, you know, we're doing the will of the Father and we're stepping out on faith. We, like, honestly, I thought we had faith in California, but we didn't. Our faith is proven out here. Like, we have to have faith every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. Every day to survive. Like, when it comes to food or gas. Uh, getting to work um, everything like it just requires a, us to have faith in him and um, I don't want to give up that just because it's a struggle people struggle a lot of people in the bible struggle and um, that doesn't mean like you know 
just because God died on the cross for us that it's over. No, it's just we just have to lean on him more to mm -hmm. and trust him. We thought we had faith. You know, oh, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of times it's so easy to be like, oh, yeah, I have faith. But when it comes to us, we're just like, oh, I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for those of you who have been following the ministry for a while, you know, the slogan that, that I always use, I'm like, oh, God can make the impossible possible on your behalf today. You know, mm -hmm. I remember one day God checked me. And uh, I remember he was like, but do you have faith? And I'm like, yeah. And then we went through a, a like a long period, a long season where it felt like nothing was coming in, yeah. you know, finances, nothing. But God always provided every single day for us to eat. Every day. Every day. It was just, it was so weird it, it, just how, how God did that, you know. There'll be times where we had nothing, nothing in our account. And uh, I would look to my wife and full of faith and I'll be like, we're good, you know. Deep down inside, I'm hurrying. I'm like, oh, man, I'm probably going to have to fast today. <laughs> and I will look over, and every time, never never failed, every time I'll be like, okay, I don't know what we're going to do tonight. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> and uh, literally right after I would say that, what would happen? Something would come in. Yeah. Or a random check will get, or somebody would text me and be like, hey, God told me to send this to you. Yeah. It was like every, and it was just enough for that day. What just is, enough. What does he say? Look at the birds. Yeah, he <laughs> said, look at the birds in the air. They don't sow nor reap. They don't even, you know, grab the harvest, but your heavenly father takes care of them. Mm -hmm. And then it goes even deeper, and he says, how much more will I do for you? Right. Like, but we, when we read that, amazing. we're like, oh, that's cute. Thank right. you. You know, but when you're actually in you're like, oh, yes, he's telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're just like, oh, man, like, this, this is really speaking to me. Yeah. It's like, wow. No, it's, yeah, he, he will provide. Don't give up. Please don't give yeah. up. Yeah. People need you. We need more s s people to help save souls and bring them to Christ. Um, Absolutely. Of course, you know, the devil's going to come in and try to stop that. That's his job. Yeah. He's a hater, you know? So <laughs> Right. Um, it was Bob said, accuser of the brethren. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> don't give up. It's just, it's more rewarding. Um, Like I said, we could have had almost everything we wanted in California, but it's just like the fact that we have a small group and it's just like, I don't know. It just, it, it brings more joy to me. Like it, it's not worth the, the fame or the money or whatever comes with it. Like, you know, people see on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I just feel so good serving the Lord. And I just, I will hope to, I just hope this helps you have the right mindset. Like don't, don't think, or don't compare, don't feel like, okay, well, money's going to come in and I don't have to work. No, he, you have to work. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. Again, you know, my, my husband, when he gets on Instagram and praying for people, like, he has to have the right mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, he has to stay pure. He has to watch what he watches, like, study the yeah. word, um, pray for hours. Um and then he, you know, if you've seen him pray, he's not like a, a cute, like, oh, like this. Like, he's going in, you know, it's like a workout. He's sweating and everything. So it's it's not easy. It's not easy, you know. Yeah. But it's so worth it. It is. You know? It is. Um, it's incredible mm -hmm. how just having faith, just trusting him, you know, yeah. it's, it's beautiful.